you all the top news stories. From ITN, News at 10, with Trevor MacDonald. Cautious clerk trims a penny of income tax. Budget chair for drinkers, but not for drivers. First look at the devastation inside the channel. And how shops are battling the lorry blockade. Good evening. It wasn't a Santa Claus budget, said the Chancellor Kenneth Clark today, but it wasn't Scrooge either. He duly gave with one hand this afternoon and took away with the other. Among his main announcements, the standard rate of income tax is cut by a penny to 23 pence. There's no change in the price of beer or wine, but duty on spirits comes down by 26 pence a bottle. Alco Pops, alcoholic soft drinks, are to go up by seven or eight pence in the bottle in the new year. But bad news for drivers. Petrol and diesel are up by three pence a litre. The car tax disc is up by another five pounds to 145. And cigarettes will cost another 15 pence for a packet of 20. The Chancellor announced extra spending next year on schools, law and order and the health service but the abolition from 1998 of two benefits for lone parents. He called his budget a virtuous one, fiscally tight, and he said he was setting out economic policy not for the five months up to the election, but for the next five years. Here's our political editor, Michael Brunson. At Westminster tonight, reactions along party lines. Tory backbenchers meeting the Chancellor in committee room 14 thumped their desks, but not too loudly, I'm told, sensing a steady-as-she-goes budget. And in the corridors, Labour and the Liberal Democrats said the whole thing was a smoke and mirrors exercise, a con trick. For months, the Chancellor and the Prime Minister have been signalling there'd be no pre-election bribe in the budget. But before all the heavyweight stuff, he allowed himself the first of several jokes. After all, there'd been the budget leak today and his emergency statement on Europe yesterday. I'm about to deliver uh, the real budget statement. <laughs> And I think this is positively my last appearance in the House in a speaking capacity in the course of this week, or so at the moment I expect it to be. But... <laughs> of much greater importance in this confidently delivered speech, the decision to go not for a 2p tax cut, but for just 1p, coupled with changes to the tax bans and allowances. That was carefully explained. If I put it all on the rates, I actually could have taken two pence off income tax, the basic rate, on the measures I've announced but I preferred instead to raise personal alliances and widen the 20 pence ban for those at the bottom end of the scale. Yes, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm indeed also, on top of that, able to reduce the basic rate of income tax by one penny to 23 pence in the pound. The Chancellor occasionally sipping and enjoying a whiskey and water during his one hour and 16 minute speech sees the four billion cut in government borrowing and the two billion cut in spending as the budget's bedrock. A clear signal to the city that there'll be no need for panic interest rate rises and to the country that people's mortgages and their household bills will remain steady. This isn't a budget just for the next few months, it's a budget for many prosperous years to come. And it's a budget that Conservative government will build upon again in 12 months' time. I commend this budget to the House. So politics there, clear hopes for election victory, and the Prime Minister showed his approval. But Tony Blair attacked it all, chiefly on the grounds that in Labour's view, the Tories can never, ever be trusted on tax. It's not just that he's wrong on a lot of the figures he gave. It's not just that he's concealed a lot of the true facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that when those fundamental questions are met and have to be answered, that party opposite has no vision for the future that can possibly answer them. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is actually the last gasp budget of a government whose time is up, which can't be trusted with the future and can't make amends for the past. After the Labour cheers, the House, as usual, rather cruelly emptied ahead of the other speeches, but Paddy Ashdown's criticism of the budget was no less forceful than Mr Blair's. It ought to be known not as the leaked budget, but as the smoke and mirrors budget, when canny Ken turned into conjurer Ken. His budget pretends to do what it doesn't, it pretends to be what it isn't, 
And so tonight, and again along party lines, the line-by-line -line examination begins. You're better off, say the Tories. You aren't really, say the rest. Michael Brunson, News at 10, Westminster. And Michael Brunson joins us now from Westminster. Mike, you referred to those claims and counterclaims. What are we to make of them? Well, Trevor, they say there are lies, damn lies, and statistics, don't they? Well, here they all are, the sheafs of paper, statements, rebuttals, counter-rebuttals. It basically comes down to this, that the Tories are saying here, family on average earnings will be 120 year pounds better, better off from the tax changes in this budget. And here's Labour saying this budget means that the 22 Tory tax rises will have cost a typical family £2,120 by the time of the next general election. And so it goes on. The Conservatives saying, well, Labour are charging us for 22 Tory tax rises. There actually have been 25 Tory tax cuts now. And the Liberal Democrats are pointing that a lot of the spending for education is going to come up to council tax rises. But, you know, I think in the end that people are going to have a, a broader view, a broader judgment about this budget. What are Conservatives making of this? Do they think that this is an election-winning budget? Some of them do. Some of them are saying, we'll be able to go out there and we'll say, look, you're feeling better now.